Okay, now we'll talk about percents. Percents are good to understand because they show up all over the place. You might go into a store and see things are on sale at 20% off, or you might listen to the news and you hear the stock market is up 8%. So just because they're so commonly used, it's good to understand what they are. And a percent is just a way of expressing a fraction. Pieces of something are commonly expressed as percentages. And 1% is simply 1 one hundredth. That's what that means. This word 1% just means 1 one hundredth. And remembering that is the key to understanding percents. And it's easy to remember this because you can think of a cent as being 1 one hundredth of a dollar. And so just because we're used to dealing with money, we're used to dealing with percentages. We all know that 15 cents is a small part of a dollar, while 97 cents is almost a whole dollar. So 15% of something would be a small part of that something. 97% of something would be nearly the entire thing. And because of our everyday familiarity with dollars and cents, percentages in other contexts are relatively easy to understand. The symbol for percentages is this little symbol here which shows up on a typewriter, it's usually over the 5 key, hit shift 5, and that just means percent. So if you see the see something written like this, 35 percent, that just means 35 hundredths. So 35 percent of something is 35 hundredths of that thing. And now we'll look at some examples of fractions being expressed as percentages. Alright, in this first one we have two-fifths equals something over a hundred and we want to figure out what we need to write right there. So we want to make this fraction equivalent to two-fifths. So we think five had to be multiplied by what to give us a hundred? Five had to be multiplied by twenty. So I'm going to take the two up here and multiply it by twenty also and two times twenty is forty. So two-fifths is 40 one hundredths and that could be written as 40 percent. This fraction right here 40 one hundredths is the same thing as 40 percent. Alright let's do the next one. 3 fourths equals how many hundredths? Well to get the denominator from 4 to 100 we have to multiply by 25 so that means I need to multiply the numerator by 25. The idea here is that you can always take a fraction and multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing and get a fraction that's equivalent. So if we multiply the top by 25 also, we end up with 75 up top. So 3 fourths, this fraction is equivalent to 75 one hundredths. And that could be written as 75 percent. And then the last one, 3 twentieths is how many one hundredths? Well again we think 20 times what gives me 100? And 20 times 5 is 100, so I'm going to multiply the numerator times 5. And these little arrows and numbers that I'm drawing here, you don't need to write those on your page. You can do this in your head. I'm just trying to make it clear to you what's going on in my mind. I'm trying to show you on the screen here what's going on in my mind, but you can do this mentally without writing it down and just say in your head 3 times 5 is 15 and you get 15 one hundredths which would be equal to 15 percent. And here's one more example. We're told to rewrite this sentence using percent notation. Seven out of the 50 people had blonde hair. So we have seven out of 50. So let's write that seven out of 50 and we want to express that as a percent. That means we need to express it as a fraction with a denominator of 100. So we say 50 had to be multiplied by what to give me 100? Well 50 times 2 is 100 so we'll go up to the numerator and also multiply it by 2 and that gives me 14. So 7 fiftieths or 7 out of 50 is the same same fraction as 14 out of 100. So this would be equal to 14 percent. So it said to rewrite the sentence using percent notation. So we would write 14% of the people had blonde hair. Fourteen percent of the people had blonde hair. So instead of writing seven out of the fifty people, 
we wrote 14% of the people. That's the percentage notation instead of the fraction. 